first classification is connective tissue proper. This is the main type, okay? And you must remember there are two types of connective tissue proper, loose and dense. <coughs> right? In loose type connective tissue, you will see the cells and few fibers or no fibers. So few or no fibers in loose type. Okay? That's why it is loose, soft, because of less or no fiber. Dense type connective tissue has plenty of fibers and the fibers are heavily packed together. So almost no space in between the fibers. So the fibers are densely packed together, bundled together. So that's why it is dense. So loose could be areolar, loose areolar, loose adipose, you have this classification already, and loose reticular, three types. Okay? So first, we'll see those three types of loose connective tissue proper. Okay? We'll see the picture, you already know how it looks like under the microscope. You have seen that in the lab. We have also seen this picture, but we'll go over the pictures. And I'll just mention a couple of locations where you will find this type of tissue in your body. So it is important that you remember those few locations, okay? I'll not mention many, just the important locations. So this is the picture of loose areolar. In loose areolar, you have fibroblasts. Those are the cells, main type, and two types of fibers. Those red fibers, you see, they often bundle together. Those are collagen fibers, and thin, dark, hair-like fibers, those are elastic fibers. <coughs> so, this is loose areola. Now, where in your body you have loose areola? One location is around the blood vessels, around your arteries, veins, and capillaries. Just in one word, around that word, blood vessels, okay? You see, this is loose type connective tissue around the blood vessel. How it helps? Because, you know, blood vessels, particularly the capillary wall is very thin, okay? Capillary wall is what? Very thin. Now, loose areolar tissue provides cushion. So if I press my tissue somewhere in the body or if you get pressed uh, or squeezed, what can happen, those blood vessels get some space around to move, make sense? Because areolar is surrounding them. So it gets some space to move, right? Otherwise, it will get crushed, make sense? So it's a protection. Under the epithelial tissue, you must remember every time I draw or we see the epithelial tissue, for example, this is simple columnar, we draw a line under it. What is this? This is a connective tissue. This is epithelial tissue, right? So this connective tissue is loose areolar, areolar type connective tissue under the epithelium or epithelial tissue. 
So it supports the epithelial tissue. <coughs> Uh, you must remember in last class I mentioned that epithelial tissue is the vascular, so blood vessel is there, but blood vessel is in underlying connective tissue. Remember that? By diffusion, they get nutrition and oxygen, right? So this underlying connective tissue is areolar. Make sense? That is called lamina propria. You see the picture in the left side, bottom? <coughs> lamina propria. <coughs> okay. Then, um, just remember those two locations around the blood vessels and under the epithelium or epithelial tissue. So it's called the lamina propria whenever it's under that? Yes, only when it is under the epithelial tissue. Yes. This is adipose or fat tissue. Adipose tissue cells are <coughs> almost empty. That's why the nucleus is attached to the membrane, goes to the side, because it is not supported by any material inside the cell. So you see here in adipose tissue cells, the nucleus is attached to the membrane. Inside the cell, you only have that two fat droplets. So some fat droplets uh, and the nucleus is attached to the cell membrane, not in the center. Where you find fat, fat is almost everywhere, but in certain locations, fats accumulate more. You know that, right? For example, in the abdomen, thick pad of fat under your muscle, okay? So that is one location, abdominal wall under the muscle. Another is subcutaneous fat under the skin, everywhere we have fat. Inferior breast. So in certain locations, you have more fat. Fats store energy. Reticular, this one. In reticular tissue, you will find reticular fibers. So very simple. In reticular tissue, you find what? Reticular fibers. <laughs> you see those black fibers, uh, thick fibers, those are reticular fibers, and they form network <coughs> in which the cells are attached. So form like net and the cells are attached to that net. Now, where we see reticular type of loose connective tissue, we find reticular in lymphoid organs, spleen, tonsil, thymus. You know that, those are the lymphoid organs. Also, we see reticular in bone marrow, location, okay? So just remember lymphoid organs like spleen, thymus, tonsils, and in the bone marrow. So those are three types of loose connective tissue proper. How they look like and important locations. Now we'll see dense. Two types of dense. Dense regular and dense irregular. Okay. Why one type is regular? Because if you see the fibers, all fibers are running in same direction. So this is regular. Right? <coughs> Irregular, you see a bundle of fibers going in one direction, another bundle of fibers going in a different direction. So, like you know, bundle of fibers running in different directions. So, this is irregular, this is regular. Makes sense, right? 
period. But in both cases, the fibers are heavily packed, densely packed. So the structure is hard or soft? What do you think? Hard. Hard, right? Where you have more fibers, that structure is tough, right? More fibers make the structure tough. You know, the clothes, right? If you see a piece of cloth that has less fiber, it, it, it is not tough, right? But if, if it has densely the fibers are present, or threads are present, it is tough. So, dense regular, densely regular, both are tough tissues. Regular, where you will find first, let's see, this is uh, dense regular. You see all fibers are going the same direction. They could be wavy like this, but all of them are like this. Fibroblasts are the cells, and collagen fibers are the fibers. So, fibroblasts and collagen fibers. Dense regular is found in candles, ligaments. <coughs> Just remember those two locations, candles and ligaments. Then go to dense irregular. You see, uh, the bundle of fibers are running um, in different directions. Where you will find dense irregular capsules around the joints. You know, joints have capsules. So capsules of the joints. Number two, dermis of the skin. Skin has two layers. Epidermis is the outer layer and dermis is the inner layer. So dermis of the skin is formed by dense irregular. Okay? Is it the dermis and what was it? The capsules? Capsules of the joints, yes. Make sense? Okay. So we are done with connective tissue proper. Then you know that we have cartilages. Okay. So there are three types of cartilages. Most common type is called hyaline. Okay, hyaline cartilage is the most common, most abundant. Another type is elastic. And fibro cartilage. So those are three types of cartilage. Make sense? <coughs> Hyaline cartilage <coughs> is the most common found in many structures. I'll mention a few structures. Fetal skeleton. The whole skeleton of a fetus, very early stage of life, right? Whole skeleton is. Hyaline cartilage. When <coughs> we get older, the hyaline cartilage turns to bone. Make sense? So, fetal skeleton, number one. Number two, respiratory tract cartilages. For example, cartilages in your trachea, bronchi, larynx, those are the parts of respiratory tract, right? Trachea, larynx, bronchi. Those cartilages are hyaline. Costal cartilages. These are called costal cartilages attached to the ribs. These are hyaline cartilages. They're called costal? Yeah, C-O-S-T-A, <coughs> costal cartilages. C-O-S-T-A-L, okay? Attached to the ribs. Articular cartilages. Articular means what? Articular means what? You should, all of you should. Articulation. You uh, articulate the <coughs> words to make a sentence, right? Have you learned that? Articulate the words to make a sentence. What is articulation? Joining. Right? So joints. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway, uh, so, you know, 
articular cartilage means joint cartilages, right? In the joints, you have cartilages. So, all those are what? <coughs> what type of cartilages? Hyaline cartilages, right? All those are hyaline cartilages. Then, <coughs> elastic cartilages. Where you will find the elastic cartilage? Elastic cartilage is present in only few structures where you have elasticity in those structures. For example, here, it has elasticity, right? You can change the shape easily, but when you remove the pressure, it goes back to its actual shape. Make sense? That is elasticity. So, here, an epiglottis. Here, an epiglottis. Both start with E. E, E, E. Elastic cartilage, ear, epiglottis. Make sense? So, those structures have flexibility or elasticity. So, your ear, what was the other thing? Here? Epiglottis. Do you know epiglottis? Inside the larynx? Okay. Now, fibrocartilage. Where do you find fibrocartilage? This one, <coughs> only few structures. Number one, pubic symphysis. This piece of cartilage here, you see, that connects the hip bones together in the front. This is called pubic symphysis. This piece of cartilage is fibro. Another is intervertebral discs in between vertebrae. Intervertebral <coughs> discs. Okay. Also fibrocardio. And another is meniscus. Have you heard meniscus? Present in which joint? We hear turning of meniscus. Right. Knee. Good. So, meniscuses of knee joint. So, these structures are formed by fibrocartilage. Okay? And a lot of fibers give these structures. Toughness or hardness, a lot of fibers. That's why it is called fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage has a lot of what? Fibers. fibers. Make sense? So these structures are what? Tough, right? And uh, yeah, protects the structures in your body. Anyway, so those are the locations. Now I'll just go over how they look like under the microscope. This is hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage has few cells, and those cells are located inside the lacunae. So this is lacunae. These are lacunae, and inside the lacunae you have the cells, nucleus. Okay, so that is <coughs> how the cells are located in the bones and cartilages. So lacunae cell is called chondrocyte. <coughs> Chondro means cartilage. Chondrocyte means cell. So the cartilage cells are called chondrocytes. And in between, you have the matrix. Since the cells are few, the amount of matrix is high. Large amount of matrix in between lacunae because the number of cell is less in higher. You see there. Okay. Plenty of matrix, few cells. You already know the locations. It has a skeletal, postal cartilages, respiratory tract cartilages, articular cartilages, right? I mentioned that. 
elastic. It is kind of opposite of hyaline. In elastic, you see more cells. Here in hyaline, you had what? Few cells, right? But in elastic, you have what? More cells. So, you have a lot of cells. That means what? Matrix is more or less. Less. Right? So, less matrix. Make sense? So, opposite. And in hyaline, you did not see any fibers. But here, you have elastic fibers. You already know elastic fibers. <coughs> so, see the picture elastic fibers. kind of opposite, right? More cells, a small amount of ground substance, and fibers are present. What kind of fibers? Elastic, elastic because what kind of cartilage is it? Elastic. elastic, so elastic fibers, right? So that is elastic cartilage, your epiglottis. Fibro, its name is telling you. Fibrocartilage has a lot of fibers. That's why it is fibro. <coughs> and these are collagen fibers. <coughs> collagen fibers. You have fibroblasts. So this is fibrocartilage. Makes the structure tough. And I have already mentioned the locations. How many of you remember? Tough structures. Meniscus. Meniscus, very good. Intervertebral discs, right? Because you know that body weight is mostly. Yeah, pubic symphysis. So body weight is mostly transmitted through the spine, right? So these cartilages must be tough. If these are you know, soft, then they will get crashed. Make sense? So, they must be tough. Make sense? Okay. So, those are three types of cartilages and their location. Now, we'll see the bone. <coughs> Two types of bones are Compact, which is the hard bone, and spongy, which is soft bone. Spongy is also called capsulous bone. When you eat chicken leg, you know the end part is soft, right? You can crash easily. The middle part, sharp part, is hard, right? Because at the end you have spongy bone. That's why it is soft, right? And hard part is, or hard bone is compact bone. If you see the structure, microscopic structure of a compact bone, you will see round structures. Each round circle or round structure is called ostium. So this is an ostium, this is another ostium. In the center of the ostium, you have central canal. Make sense? Central canal. Which contains the blood vessels and nerves. So your blood vessels, nerves, those are located or pass through central canal. Around the central canal, you have lacunae, small cavities. So both the bone tissue and the cartilage <coughs> tissue, you have lacunae, right? And inside the lacunae, you have the bone cells, right? Inside the lacunae, you have what? Bone cells. So, 
the bone cells are called osteocytes. Osteo means bone. Cartilage cells are called chondrocytes. Start with C. Bone cells are called osteocytes. So this is osteocyte, like tiny spider or insect, okay? Sitting inside the lacuna. So I can say this is osteocyte within lacunae, okay? So all these lacunae contain osteocyte or bone cells, okay? And last thing, in between the lacunae you have matrix, you know that. Matrix is in between the cells. And in case of bone, the matrix is very hard. And that hard matrix of bone is called lamella. So lamella is the hard matrix of the bone in between lacunae. And this lamella gives the hardness to the bone. Okay, so that is compact bone tissue under the microscope. Spongy bone doesn't have any particular shape. You'll see many broken osteos inside the spongy bone. Like, you know, broken pieces of osteos. Okay. So, uh, yes, no. <coughs> then, so two types of bones or bone tissue compact and spongy. And the last type is fluid type connective tissue. You know, fluid type of connective tissue are blood and lymph. Lymph is another fluid circulates inside the lymphatic system. Blood circulates inside the cardiovascular system, right? And lymph circulates inside what? The lymphatic system. So, both belong to connective tissue. If you see blood under the microscope, you have already seen that, you will find three types of cells. Red blood cells, most of the cells are red blood cells. You see here, white blood cells, purple nuclei inside, and platelets. They didn't level, uh, level it here. This is a platelet, very tiny, okay? So, red blood cells are most of the cells in the blood. You have white blood cells and platelets. And in between the cells, you have plasma, which is like matrix. Plasma is a liquid present in the blood, okay? Liquid in the blood. So it is like matrix. So these are different types of connective tissue and some information about them. Nervous tissue. Nervous tissue forms the nervous system. So nervous system is composed of nervous tissue, also called a neural tissue. Okay? Now you know that nervous system consists of a brain, a spinal cord, and many nerves, right? So, neural tissue or nervous tissue is formed in the brain, in the spinal cord, and in the nerves. Those are the locations. Nervous tissue is highly sensitive and delicate tissue. Most delicate and sensitive tissue in your body. Now, uh, that's why the nervous tissue structures are heavily protected, right? You know that. Your brain is heavily protected by the bones, right? Your spinal cord is heavily protected. Why? Because they are very sensitive, very delicate. Make sense? Two types of cells are present in the neural tissue or nervous tissue. 
the main cells are called the neurons. The main cells are what? Mm -hmm. Neurons. And supporting cells are called <coughs> neuroglia. So those are two kinds of cells. And uh, neurons have a cell body. This is the cell body, nucleus inside, and processes. These short processes are dendrite, and long process is axon. Anyway, so cell body and processes. This is a neuron. And also, we see neuroglial cells. There are different types neuroglial cells. So, neurons and neuroglial cells. That is nervous tissue, okay? Uh, or neural tissue. Conduction of electrical signal, you already know, right? Nervous system transmits electrical signal. Electrical signal transmission, right? So that is the function. And <coughs> nervous system is the main control system of your body. So controlling the most of the functions of the body. Controlling most of the functions of your body. This is uh, a neural tissue under the microscope. You see the neurons, you see the processes, you see tiny dots. Those are the nuclei of supporting cells or neuroglial cells. Okay. <coughs> okay, so that's the neural tissue. That is easy, right? Only one. Okay. Uh, connective tissue, so many types, right? So you have to remember more stuff. But neural tissue, just one. So that is good. Muscle. There are three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle tissue, target muscle tissue, and smooth muscle tissue. So three types of muscles. Now, if you see a skeletal muscle tissue under the microscope, the fibers are cylindrical. So like this cylindrical fibers and inside the fiber you see striations. You have seen that. So number one cylindrical fibers, number two striations are present, number three in each fiber you have multiple nuclei and nuclei are not in the center attached to the membrane, that means multiple peripherally located nuclei. We say multiple peripherally, that means not centrally, nuclei. Okay. So cylindrical fibers, striations, multiple peripherally located nuclei. So that is skeletal muscle tissue. <coughs> I have already mentioned in uh, last lecture, skeletal muscles are attached to what? The bones, skeletal, right? So they help in locomotion, movement, right? Locomotion or movement, because they are attached to the skeletal. So, Skeletal muscle is voluntary or involuntary? How do you think? Voluntary. voluntary. We can control the movement, right? As we desire. Okay. So that is skeletal. Now, if you see cardiac muscle tissue under the microscope, cardiac muscle tissue also has cylindrical fibers. So fibers are like this, cylindrical. Also, striations are present. So these two things are same as the skeletal. Cylindrical fibers, striations present. In case of cardiac, the striations are less clear, less clearly seen, or less prominent. In a skeletal, it is very clear. But in both, striations are present. Those two things are same in cardiac and skeletal. In case of cardiac, Usually, a single nucleus. 
which is different than skeletal, right? Remember, yeah. skeletal has multiple peripheral located nuclei. So, single nucleus. Sometime, occasionally, we we'll see two, but not more than that, okay? Most of the cases, single nuclei. Another thing, which is very important, in cardiac muscle tissue, you'll see intercalated discs. They connect the fibers. So, this is one fiber, this is another. They are connected or attached by inter related discs, okay? Very important in cardiac muscle. Thick band. Okay, another thing is present in the cardiac muscle tissue, branching. We see occasional presence of branches. So, from the side of the muscle fiber, branches arise. So, which two things are common, skeletal and cardiac? Cylindrical fibers, right? And sternum. Which things are different? In skeletal, you have multiple peripherally located nuclei, right? But in case of cardiac, usually what? One. Yeah. Uh, in skeletal, no branching, right? In cardiac, you see branching. In skeletal, no intercalated disc, right? But cardiac has what? Intercalated discs. Make sense? And skeletal is what? Voluntary or involuntary? Voluntary. But cardiac is what? Involuntary. If you tell your heart, stop, it will not be. Voluntary, which is good or bad? Good. good okay. Yeah, sometimes we think my life is useless, okay? I don't want to live, but your heart will not listen. <laughs> live, right? uh, but skeletal always follows the commands. Okay. So, that is cardiac. <coughs> Only present in the heart. Highly specialized type muscle tissue. Only found in the Heart, smooth, smooth is very simple, okay? <clears throat> the muscle fibers are spindle shaped, not cylindrical. Spindle shaped means both ends are pointed or tapered, like your eye. Middle part is wide, both ends are pointed. So that is spindle shaped. So this is one muscle fiber. And no striation, no intercalated disc, no branching, very simple. A single nucleus located centrally, centrally located single nucleus. That's all, right? So spindle shaped muscle fiber and centrally located single nucleus. That's all. So this is another, so they are attached to each other like this. Sometimes it is difficult to see the cell membranes or the membrane of the fiber, so it becomes more complicated, but if you can see all these membranes of the cells, it will look like this, okay? Like this. Okay, so this is smooth muscle, okay? Found in the wall of tube-like structures, I have mentioned in last class, right? In the wall of hollow organs, you have smooth muscle, okay? So, three types of muscle tissue and their location. Now, we'll talk about something that you very commonly hear, the term inflammation, right? Inflammation is commonly hard word. What is inflammation? Inflammation is the response of your tissue to injury. So if any injury occurs, how your tissue responds, right? That is inflammation. If something scratches you or something hits you very strongly, right? How your tissue responds? 
by showing what? Inflammation, right? Now tell me, what are the signs of inflammation? Swelling. Swelling, very good. Yep. And redness, yes. Pain. Pain. Heart. Yes. Slightly that area gets warm. So, good. So you said swelling. Uh, sorry. Uh, you said swelling. You said um, uh, redness, right? You said pain. You said temperature. Right? So, those are the signs of inflammation. Why those changes occur in the tissue? When you get Injury in the tissue, you know that tissue has cells, and in between cells, you have interstitial fluid. <clears throat> so, this is tissue. Now, <clears throat> in the tissue, you all know that you have capillaries, right? Blood vessels are almost everywhere, and you have nerves. So nerve endings, these are nerves, okay? When tissue gets injury, tissue releases certain chemicals. For example, tissue releases histamine. Tissue releases <coughs> prostaglandin. or PG, tissue releases bradykinin. Okay, so these are some chemicals released from the tissue when it gets injured. Now, histamine does what? Causes vasodilation dilate the capillaries. So what happens, you see, when these capillaries get dilated, look at me, this is your normal capillary size, okay? These chemicals do what? Dilate the capillary. So what will happen? More or less blood will flow here. More blood will go there, right? Because the capillaries got wider, dilated. So, if more blood flows in this area than other areas, then this area will look what? Red. red. Because blood is red, right? If more blood flows somewhere, that area becomes, color becomes red, right? So that is the reason why we see redness. Make sense? Now you look at me. This is the capillary wall and you must know that capillary wall has tiny holes or pores because through the capillary wall, gas exchange, right? Nutrient exchange, chemical exchange takes place, okay? So through the capillary wall. So capillary wall has what? Many tiny holes, okay? Now, this is normal tiny holes. You see here, these are normal tiny holes. Now, when the capillaries get wider, the holes get what? Yeah, bigger, right? Like if you make tiny holes in a piece of rubber, okay, rubber, and expand it, what will happen? The holes will get look bigger, right? Like this. So same thing, the wall has elasticity, so wall gets stressed when it gets dilated, right? And the holes get what? Bigger. Make sense? And fluid comes out from the blood and accumulates in the interstitial spaces. Make sense? So fluid gets out from the blood and accumulates in between the cells. So that will cause what? Swelling. Make sense? So edema, right? You know edema? Edema? Okay. So I think some of you know it. Fluid accumulates, you'll see fluid some areas in the body. In old people, you will see sometimes fluid accumulates in the foot, right? 
Anyway, so same thing actually, swelling or edema due to accumulation of fluid. Mm -hmm. So that is another redness. slightly warmer than your body. Blood is what? Slightly yeah. warmer. warmer. So when more blood flows <coughs> here, that area will get what? Slightly warmer. 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 Make sense? So heat. <coughs> and yeah. prostaglandin particularly, just know the chemicals stimulate the nerve endings and that causes what? Pain. Pain. 